live on both. Damn, live already? What? Is it that time Hello. already? Hi, YouTube. Hi, Facebook. Let us take a look here and see what we have. Dun dun. Jack is helping me today. That's not a very good way to cut chicken. Uh, okay. Because we have a volume control here. All right. Let us see if all the you live here, all the if all the Facebook people are on. Hello, everyone. So I am not Tara Kellum, the author of the Dining on a Dime cookbook, and neither is this. But today, Tara's at the doctor. So we thought we would go ahead and go on with the show because the show must go on, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. I'm just making sure we're live, and we are. Yay. All right. <clears throat> so today, it's the Dave and Dad and Jack show. And, uh, oh yeah, <clears throat> as I say, I am not... The author of the Dining on a Dime Cookbook. I'm Mike, and Tara, my wife, is author of the Dining on a Dime Cookbook, along with her mom, Jill, who hopefully is in the comment feed right now. And um, yeah, we talk about saving money on groceries, and you can learn a lot of a whole bunch of stuff here and get some great recipes. So anyway, today we are going to make um, chicken pot pie on page 255. All right. So I was trying not to do too much of this ahead of time because I didn't want to... I didn't, this is really a fast recipe and I didn't want the show to be over too quick. Hey Jack, do you want to keep an eye on the comments and see if anybody... Right so... For me to go down? Yes. So... Hopefully everybody's saying hi. Hello. Oh, you know what? Actually, Jack, I don't know if you can do this, but if you can paste this recipe in. Actually, we're going to paste the recipe in right now in the comments. Can you Let me see if I can do it. like Command B in here and on Facebook? Ooh, I love the new So <clears throat> we are posting the, or uh, putting the, the pot pie recipe. Jack is sharing it in the comments for me right now, but it's also on page 255 in our Dining on a Dime cookbook. If you have an older version, go ahead and look in the index in the back because the page numbers are different for some different other versions. <clears throat> so in this recipe, it calls for uh, one and a half cups of chicken or turkey. And believe it or not, this is one and a half cups. <laughs> and this is, I'm not sure if this is chicken or turkey, to be honest. It's something that Tara had previously cooked and froze. And I just defrosted it for this recipe. Because she made some chicken the other night for one of the shows and we ate it already. <laughs> or gave it away or whatever. So it says cubed. It, you don't have to be real perfectionist about cubed. I just cut it into pieces. Uh, mainly so that it's kind of smaller bite-sized pieces. So anyway, I hope you're all having an awesome day. It's beautiful and sunny here in Colorado. I'm stalling just a minute to make sure that as many people as possible can get on. So the way we start this, uh, now you can make this from, well, the way we do it in the recipe is we use frozen mixed vegetables and chicken that we've already cooked before, and a can of cream of mushroom soup, <clears throat> and some other items. <clears throat> but if you have fresh vegetables that are left over and they're about to go bad or something you just need to cook, you can actually use them. Uh, you just want to make sure you cut them into small pieces. So I was stalling for a minute, but I'm going to go ahead and go now. So at the beginning we want to, well first of all the oven we had to preheat to 400, which I did, and I actually had to take a turkey out of the oven because Tar was doing a slow roasted turkey. Um, anyway, so it's preheating now and we're going to go ahead and put the vegetables and the chicken and a few other things in the bowl here. So since I already have the chicken cut, I'm going to dump that in here. And I probably won't need the cutting board for the frozen vegetables. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? Really, it's also pretty warm. <laughs> oh, it's pretty warm. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> it's what it's. It's probably 60 degrees today, which for Colorado this time of year is pretty warm. Okay, so it calls for one and two thirds cups, and you know, you don't really have to be perfectionist, but I'm gonna come close to being perfectionist just because it's the recipe. The, I like to make it according to the recipe, and then modify it later if I want. And I actually was thinking, well, I love garlic and I'd love to put a little garlic in here, but I'm gonna not. I'm gonna resist the temptation and do it 
according to the recipe the first time. So we put the chicken and the vegetables in. And again, like I said, if you have any leftover vegetables, broccoli or celery or uh, green beans or anything, you can slice it up, cut it up into small pieces like this and use that instead. Ask Tara if it was like raw carrots or something, if you'd need to cook it longer. And she said, probably not. So that should be fairly straightforward. All right. And we're gonna add our can of uh, cream of chicken soup. Now, if you guys wanted to use other meat, like leftover roast beef or like leftover pot roast, or uh, like ground beef, hamburger meat, like from tacos or whatever, uh, you can use that. But if you do, probably be better to use cream of um, mushroom instead of cream of chicken. I asked Tar, would the beef conflict, you know, make a conflict with the chicken? And she said, nah, probably not, but she'd use mushroom. Rosemary is wondering where Tara is. So Tara had a doctor's appointment <clears throat> and she normally doesn't schedule them during the shows. But she, it's been really hard to get an appointment with our doctor. So she decided to, I told her, well, we'll just do the show and you can go. <laughs> All right, so got the vegetables and the chicken and the soup mixed up here. And I'm supposed to also put some thyme in. One quarter teaspoon. Do, 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 do. Anybody else have any questions? Hmm? Not really. It seems... Like, I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put a heaping quarter reason, teaspoon because I always like. There's only been two comments on Facebook. Don't know what's happening over there. Yeah, refresh. Oh, yeah, hit refresh on it. All right. So yum. This smells really good now. You can see oh, that. There it is. So this is basically the guts of the pot pie. And it, like I said, it's pretty flexible. You can adjust or modify it by adding things that you want. Okay, so. Believe it or not, I was stalling just because it was taking so short a time to do it. All right, so I'm going to take this now, this mixture that I've made. This is going to be the inside of the pot pie. And I'm going to pour it in the pie pan first. Now you can make, ours does not have, in the cookbook, does not call for a, uh, a bottom crust because it's supposed to be quick and easy. Uh, but if you want a bottom crust, Jill's, uh, Jill's pie crust, crust recipe, I think it's on our website under the very best pie crust. Jack, oh. can you share that link? It's in there. Um, it's in the description below, but we'll see if Jack can share it. You um, could make that pie crust and use it as a bottom crust. You just want to probably I, leave out I the sugar. It. It's called the very best pie. How, how many people does this feed usually? Um, kind of depends on how much they eat, but we, we were easily able to feed six or seven people with it. Um, but if you eat a lot, then maybe less. But um, it's essentially the same size as a normal pie, so... And really, because this has the meat and the vegetables and all that, and it's going to have a bread crust on the top, you don't really need to eat anything. This could be a one-dish meal. But probably because I have to bake this for a while, I was going to make um, a green bean thing after this, just to kind of use some time. Yes, Dave? Uh, I was just going to say, Facebook is bugging out. So sorry if we miss your questions. You might have to hold them until later. Facebook is malfunctioning. Yeah, you have yeah. to refresh for it to, for for it to the update. Comments. I see. <clears throat> okay, so if you have the book, it says one cup biscuit mix in it, and um, that's actually the same thing as baking mix. And we have a recipe for baking mix, which I'm sure many of you know about, which is essentially bisquick. Um, but Tar didn't have any, and she's been testing recipes for the new book. So I stopped and bought some. <clears throat> so for the next part, we're gonna make the crust part on the top. So let's see, how much baking mix do I need? Do do one cup. Yeah, and we might need to change this in our book, but Tar said that it used to say biscuit mix on the package, and now it says baking mix. So essentially, I think if you're gluten-free, you could probably use something like Pamela's, although the soup, the soup wouldn't be gluten-free. Um, Okay, so let's see. Combine biscuit mix, milk, and egg. All right, one half cup of milk. And let me go ahead and crack the egg real quick here. Ooh. <clears throat> All right. Excuse me, Jack. I'm not a 
actually sure if I need to scramble this egg, but I'm going to just mix it all up. All right, so I'm gonna put this in here and we also need a half a cup of milk. And I, I'm actually looking at the side of the measuring cup so that I can get the right proportions here. And the reason I'm doing this in the measuring, this is probably not the smartest idea, but the reason I poured it all in here is I didn't want to have to dirty more containers. Um, so I'm stirring this. Now this is going to be the batter for the crust on the top. Yes, Jack? Cindy is asking if you worked on the food industry. <laughs> I did not. I used to work in the television, though. <laughs> Actually, Tara... Uh, 20 years ago, when Tar was on bed rest with our oldest son, she was part of a group called Parents Place, where moms that were all expecting babies at the same month would get together and talk about whatever they wanted to talk about. And she was kind of, if those of you who know her, know that she just couldn't handle bed rest at all. So, you know, not doing anything. So she decided to write, um, to write a cookbook at that time. And since then we've just, uh, we've done this for 20 years now. So mostly Tara does the cooking on the show and of course Jill uh, when she's here. But I can, I just don't that often. Okay, so now this is done. And again, we could do this faster, but I'm kind of trying to not be too quick about it <clears throat> but if you want to be quick about it it's easy all right so i'm going to pour this over the top wait i'm not supposed to do that <laughs> just kidding so like i like i was saying i don't know if i said it all earlier but jill's pie crust on our website at livingonadime.com it's called the very best pie crust if you made that for the you could make it for a base if you wanted the base to be a crust as well, or you could make uh, Mike's baking powder biscuits. You could just look how to make homemade biscuits on Living on a Dime, and the links are actually in the description for the show. Oops, I was trying to just make this cover the stuff in there. Uh, you could use the biscuits or Jill's pie crust as a base, and it would work just fine. Although with Jill's crust, you'd probably want to leave the sugar out so it's not sweet. All right, cool. This is pretty much it. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and stick this in the oven and I think I'm gonna learn from Tara's mistake. I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put a baking sheet underneath it because it looks like when that rises, it might kind of spill over the edge. All right, this is gonna be super delish. All right, so it's gonna take about 25 to 30 minutes. I'm gonna set it for 30. Set my timer for 30. <clears throat> you can come back up for a second, Dave, if you want. Oh, you are back up. <laughs> so I set it for 30 minutes and it's been preheating to 400. So that's really all it takes. And so we just have to wait till then and it should be ready to go. And because I didn't want to have to stand here and say nothing, <laughs> I decided to go ahead and make our green beans as well. So over on page 169, the Dining on a Dime cookbook is green beans. And most of you, well, a lot of you probably have had it this way, but this, this way has uh, some bacon and some onion and stuff like that in with the green beans to give them a little more pizzazz. So I'm gonna go ahead and, I saved some work to do on camera so that, <laughs> so that I wouldn't be done too early. <laughs> Any questions from anyone, guys? Uh, Julie is asking, have you ever substituted almond flour in your recipes? Uh, I don't know if Tara's done almond flour. I know in a lot of the recipes she's used Pamela's uh, gluten-free. And I know almond flour, I think that would be gluten-free too. And she's probably used it, but I'm not 100% sure. Mostly I know we've used the Pamela's. Um, unfortunately for this recipe, because it uses a can of soup, there would be dairy in that the soup and I don't know if there would be gluten or not. I should look and see. Um, hmm, I don't see 
oh, milk, wheat, soy. Yep, so it does have, it would have gluten in it as well. Uh, so if you were going to try to make it with some other thing like the almond flour, you probably would need um, to make the soup. I'm not sure if cream of mushroom would have gluten, but it would probably have the dairy as well. Okay, so for the green beans, page 169. I checked just before the show and we don't have a post for it. I'm sorry, but it's pretty easy. So if you don't have the book, you should be able to just follow along. <clears throat> um, wow, I just realized it says one pound of green beans or one 16 ounce can. I actually got a 12 ounce package, so that's gonna have to work. It will. The thing is, this recipe isn't like a baked good, so the actual amount of beans is not that urgent. Yes, Jack? What does your apron say? Uh, it says, Trophy, trophy Husband. <laughs> and I almost felt bad wearing it when Tara wasn't here, because she can't be agreeing with it when she's not here. She's been not feeling good lately, and so I think with her going to the doctor today is probably a good thing. Um, and honestly, I've been telling her that I should do the shows more just so she can stand down from that. Okay, this is one to two tablespoon of onion, and I think I'm going to kind of wing it a little bit. Now, if you have Dining on a Dime, I noticed that it says in the instructions, chop scallions, <laughs> and it, scallions would be fine, but Tara said that's not actually what we're supposed to put in it, so apparently that's a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> but scallions are onions too, so that'd be fine. Let's see, one to two. I'm going to put a little, well, yeah, that's about two tablespoons. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut these into smaller pieces. And I already fried the bacon. This recipe asks for some bacon, and I fried it earlier just because I thought it'd be kind of a big mess to do that while we're in the show. And we have a pan that we use for the show that's Unfortunately, not ideal for cooking things like bacon, and it seems to smoke a lot. So I didn't want to risk having an <laughs> exciting tar moment on the show. <laughs> All right, let's see. All right. So, um, what I did is I cooked the bacon earlier, and actually this is way more bacon than we need for this recipe, but I went ahead and cooked it all, and the boys ate some already. And I left a little bit of the grease in the pan, and it says to leave to reserve two tablespoons, and so I did. Normally you wouldn't let it cool, but I was waiting before the show. So uh, now I'm going to go ahead and saute these onions. So basically we want to saute the onions a little bit, and then we're going to add the beans and cook for just a little bit longer. Because they're frozen, I might cook them slightly longer than the recipe asks for. But I'm going to go ahead and do the onions first. So. Oops, and I forgot to turn on the stove. Wah. I didn't take do anything. Looking for the pecan. Okay, oh yeah, might, might as well go ahead. Well, that's, while we're waiting for that to heat up, I'm gonna go ahead and, so it says four slices of bacon. You know, you can use however much you want. And the other thing is, if you don't have bacon, you can use bacon grease. These are half slices, so I'm gonna use eight because I just want to see what it's like with actual bacon in it. <laughs> but you can get the same bacon flavor from just using bacon grease, which we usually keep bacon grease in a can or a jar in the fridge, and then we use it for recipes like this. So uh, I was actually gonna break this with my hand, but since it's so many pieces, uh, not yet. Let's wait till we get the recipe going first. Any questions or comments from anyone? Do, 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 do. Guys? Um, um, not much. <laughs> you could say no, but that's fine. That's probably a lot of bacon based on having had this before, but we've got it, so why not? <laughs> In fact, I might even put a little more on. Well, actually, I won't because the boys Facebook are asking for Facebook is still being weird, so I don't know on Facebook. Okay. All right. I am washing my hands real quick to get the bacon grease off. Okay, so just gonna lightly saute the beans. Well, actually, it says until limp. I'm 
things like the screen bean recipe. So here's the thing. As far as recipes, oh, you can put the camera back up, Dave. All right. Uh, as um, far as a lot of the recipes, it's not super urgent that you get it exactly the same. I mean, if you want it to taste exactly the same, it should be pretty close. But it mostly really matters for things that are baked, that use things like yeast or baking powder. Because if you just kind of randomly get a different amount of ingredients, it may not turn out so well. Uh, but things like the green beans, if you put more bacon or less bacon or bacon grease or more or less onions, or you say, I like them a little more, the onions a little less done, that would be fine. Okay, so that's actually looking really good and it smells really good. So I went ahead and sauteed those onions just a little bit. All right. Now, it's time to go ahead and add the green beans. So we're going to save the bacon until almost last because we don't want it to really cook anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and add the green beans. And because they're still a little bit frozen, it might take a little longer. So normally at this point, we'd probably cook these for about a minute. I'll have to see how it goes. I might cook them slightly longer. <laughs> so last, we're here in Colorado and the sun finally came out today and it's supposed to be 60s and 70s all week. And we've had a lot of snow, a lot more than usual. So I think we're okay with that. Saturday, Dave and I went up snowshoeing in the Rocky Mountain National Park, which is about 40 minutes to an hour, or about 40 minutes from us. We take Jack sometimes, but he didn't want to go this time. Because the last time he went with us, it was really cold, blowing wind and all that. I'm just putting the lid on because they were a little bit frozen. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, we've been having a good time with that. And uh, for those of you who haven't checked it out, we have a new website template, or new website theme. So it looks different now, and uh, I've been working on that a lot. We're trying to make it kind of work better and be faster, so it's easier for people to use. Uh, but there have been some hiccups along the way. And if you, <laughs> because the shipping isn't quite set up yet, I have flat rate shipping. Uh, and if you're in the U.S., basically you can get any amount of stuff for $6 shipping, because that's the shipping for one book. Unfortunately for people out of the U.S., um, it was too expensive as it is for us to do that. But if you're out of the U.S., you will be having probably a sale in the next month or so. Are you reaching for the pecan? No. <laughs> um, oh, and there was something else I was going to tell you. Oh, yeah. Amy T, thank you for reminding us. So Amy lives in Perth, Western Australia, and uh, she said we should remind everybody that in the United States, uh, we changed for daylight savings time this weekend, which means that uh, if you are not in the United States and your time doesn't change, our show will be an hour earlier. Okay, now this does say to add a little bit of water. Let's see, I should... So it says to add one tablespoon of water. Hmm, I'm not sure why, but okay, I'll do that. So, <laughs> this is my fancy measuring method. You can see Tara and I have that from the same place. All right, so add the water and we're supposed to cook just a few more minutes. Actually, it's pretty close already. Let's see how hot it is. Oh, yum. <laughs> okay. So actually, let me go ahead and... Let's see, one teaspoon salt and a quarter teaspoon pepper. All right. And again, you can change this to your own taste. Mm, one teaspoon, okay. So let's see. With salt and pepper and add bacon bits. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and add the bacon now. And I like, like it kind of in bigger pieces, so I made it that way. Again, if you want, you could just put in bacon grease at this time and it'll give it the same flavor. Because bacon is pretty pricey these days. So we don't buy it very often. I actually bought it for the show, but it happened to be on sale, which was great. Okay, so I'm gonna just kind of put a little bit of salt and pepper in there. Oh, you should have gotten more if it was on sale. Well, it was on sale for cheap enough for the show, but not cheap enough for normal stuff. 
Well, I don't know, we might. The thing with the bacon is, our boys especially like to eat, um, like to eat an entire package of it if we cook it all at once. So, wow, look at that, guys. Oh. That's just looking amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Yum. And one reason I was, besides the fact that I like the taste, Sorry. Besides that I like the taste, I I also love the color. Seeing the green and the red and the white all looks so awesome together. It just makes it really look appealing. And I myself don't like to cook it too much. Just because I like it to be more uh, not real limp. <laughs> One thing if you use the canned green beans, which we often do, it'll probably be a little more limp. Uh, but other than that, it, it works out the same. So, all right. Let me make sure I didn't forget anything on that. Mm, okay, so what we, I could now set this aside and warm it if we're going to eat it together. Uh, but we have 17 more minutes on the, uh, on the pot pie. So I think we're just going to go ahead and test the beans now. Jack, okay. would you like to try some? Some what? Some of these. Have pecan in them. Try it. Might Maybe try a little. You don't have to eat very much, but try and see what you think. Try a little. Going out on a limb here, asking a ten-year-old to tell me how what he thinks about green beans, <laughs> especially since I haven't tasted them yet. Mm, it's pretty good. You like? Good. Mm. Here, let me try them. I mean. I'm not really a big fan of green beans, but mm. it's good. Mmm. Now, that's really good. Bacon makes anything better. <laughs> but actually, I like green beans just as they come, too. But with the onions and the bacon and everything, and it's just really delish. So, anyway, you may have one piece. And Dave, you may There's have one piece, too. extra bacon. So, we're going to sit down and wait for... The, oh yeah, we're gonna wait for the pot pie to get done, which has about 15 more minutes. It's not boiling over. And we'll check that out. In the meantime, we'll take a look and see if there are any questions or comments. Amy, we like a firmer bean here, so really cook to taste is the key. That's true. Because I, I think, I might be going out of limb here, but I think Jill likes them squishier. Am I right, Jill? <laughs> Uh, and I know because Tara and Jill like to do things like stews and things like that. I kind of like things that are less cooked, vegetables that are less cooked. So they're a little more firm texture. But man, I love colors. So making it with the actual bacon is kind of a treat for me because the green and the red and white is just visually appealing. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mm. Julia, I cook bacon for our teen boy almost every morning. I cook him three strips and serve it with eggs and toaster muffins. Doesn't cost as much this way and he loves it. Yes? It's still more bacon. Yeah. Did, Jack, did Dave already have his piece? Yeah. yeah. You can have one more, but then I need to have some after that. <laughs> so, Retro Age, that is a nice looking pan. And I think it's a... Uh, I think it's a Pioneer Woman, but it works great for cooking a lot of things. Uh, I think it is Pioneer Woman. But I found out earlier today it's not good for cooking bacon. <laughs> it, it gets really hot really fast. And so the bacon was, I turned it down to four on our electric stove. And even though I turned it down to four, it still set off the smoke detectors. <laughs> So I had to switch to our, oh, our other one, which I think also might be our smaller one. This is also Pioneer Woman, but it's um, kind of a non-stick surface and it seems to cook better. So yeah, did we get the, let's see. Um, does Jack like to cook? Jack, have you ever cooked? So he hasn't really cooked very much yet. Do you like it when you do it? Mm. Yeah. Yeah? 
<laughs> All right, I'm looking through comments here real quick. Dave, if you see something before I get to it, let me know. Mm. Oh, Jonathan's on. Hey, Jonathan. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. Boys show, you can do it. Yeah, Nancy, um, thank you for praying for Tara. She hasn't been feeling well for a while. At first, I thought it was because she's overdoing it, making new cookbooks. But she seems to have gotten some kind of a bug. And then also her fibromyalgia is bothering her. So the doctor she's going to is an osteopath. But he's also our family doctor. So he can kind of adjust her as well, which usually is awesome. Where are you going, Jack? Um, get something. <laughs> oh, Nancy says, good for you for stepping in for mom, Jack. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, I'm really in a chipper mood from the stun. <laughs> it's really nice to see it more. Oh, Crystal, so Tara is at a doctor's appointment. Uh, she scheduled it, like, we had to schedule five or six weeks in advance, and she realized yesterday it was today during the show. So I thought, well, this is a good opportunity for her to take a break. So I actually thought about doing something else, but I was a little bit concerned about making the show too chaotic. <laughs> Actually, I was going to make a bottom crust for the chicken pot pie, but uh, when I got to looking at the crust, I thought, you know, it might be just a little too much because we we're trying to make it quick and easy because um, easy pot pie recipe is not as easy if you <laughs> make it too complicated. But when I was a kid, I used to like those like ones that were a quarter at the time and you'd bake them and you just plop them upside down and... <laughs> Hello out of Goshen's. Awesome to see you. Hi, my daily side. Let's see. Yes. Just a reminder again, if you're out of the United States, uh, because the daylight savings time is changing this weekend, uh, the show will be on earlier for you after this weekend. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Yeah, this we actually saw this, since you live in Colorado, we actually saw this up in Estes Park. At the time, we had never seen one like it before. And uh, Tara and I, we saw it and then we walked away a little and she said, I really have to have that for the show. <laughs> Let's see. What you doing back there, Dave? Well, Facebook isn't working, so I can't see any comments. Ah, uh, okay. So I'm just looking on YouTube. So if you're on Facebook, Dave and Jack said that the comment we can't see the comments on Facebook right now. We have to refresh. You have to refresh. Constantly. So Lakeshore, you're Mike, you're inspiring me to make the chicken casserole now. Thanks. Yum. Yes. Actually, it's funny. Tara said, I said, how come you don't make this very often, dear? And she said, well, nobody likes it. And Elliot and I were like, we do. <laughs> it just, I didn't realize it was in the book, which is why I wanted to make it today. Um, Shelly says, cooking is really therapeutic and a great way to bond with your children. It's awesome that children get to watch Take the Wheel. Yes. Hey, Jack, how tall are you? He's gotten quite a... 5'2". Five 5'2"? Two. Five two? So, great-grandma, who's 91... I'm 6'2". He's about 6 inches shorter than him. <laughs> and then Dave's almost exactly a foot taller. <laughs> so, the funny thing on the cooking... These recipes are quick and easy, which makes it easy to get in and out fast. But I kind of like to take a little time because I don't cook that often. And so when I do, it's sort of fun. He feels like a chef. Yeah. Dave says he feels like a chef. Yeah. And actually, I almost thought about showing you guys uh, my normal cooking. <laughs> my normal style of cooking is not to use a cookbook at all. Uh, although I make when I make stuff out of this cookbook, I think, whoa, this tastes like a restaurant <laughs> compared to what I do. But usually I'll do things like I'll kind of get some chicken, some boneless chicken, um, and I'll I'll just put some fajita seasoning and some garlic and some salt on it. Oh well, maybe pepper, salt, something like that, and I'll fry it on both sides. Well, if I say fry it, I'll put a tiny amount of like olive oil in the pan. And I'll just cook it so that it's kind of nice and, you know, 
it's not stewy. It's more, you know, like chicken on the grill or something. And then I'll usually add, I'll do things like onions and peppers and sometimes mushrooms. Uh, depends on if I'm trying to make it taste more Mexican-like. I don't usually use mushrooms so much, but uh, I'll tend to adapt that with different kinds of seasonings. So sometimes I'll maybe put it on rice, or sometimes I'll maybe uh, make it more kind of Mexican-like and put it on tortillas or whatever. Yeah? I'm five foot one and three quarters, to be precise. Five one and three quarters. Hmm. So, Jack, hmm? it's kind of unlike you to be that precise. Is it? <laughs> Jack is our most precise, so I was just hassling him. Actually, they were doing a Myers-Briggs test the other day, the kids, and it turns out that Jack and I tested as the same personality type, <laughs> which I think is hilarious. And of course, so does that mean you're super detail-oriented, too? Yeah, I, I guess, well, in theory, it's not detail, but yeah, I think I am, so. Well, perfectionist, whatever. Lori, did we find a house? So we have... Tara saw a house she really liked, but I, I think we're not quite on the same wavelength in that. I think she's feeling the pressure because this house isn't really ideal for us and she doesn't personally like it. But for our business stuff, we do really need more space, particularly for books and things. Um, but she saw one in Topeka, but I just don't want to leave the mountains because the one thing that we really do that Dave and I really like is to uh, go hiking. And so as much as I didn't mind Kansas, I mean, the weather was pretty bad in Wichita, like in the summer and the winter, it was like bitterly cold and humid or bitterly hot and humid, bitterly. Uh, but other than that, I thought Kansas was fine. The main thing is here, we've really gotten to doing a lot of hiking. And last year, because we were out of the country, we had planned to go hiking, but we didn't. Not complaining, because it was a fun trip. But this year, Dave and I really have hiking on the, on our minds. And we've done three snowshoe trips this winter so far, which is more than, when I say trips, we just get up early on a weekend day and drive up to the mountains, because they're right there. So, uh, sorry, just making sure I got the time. So, we probably will do one or two more snowshoe treks and then we we're hoping to do a lot of hiking this summer. Uh, and it's in the high part of the mountains. And so Tara doesn't care about that <laughs> anymore. So she's kind of looking at houses in other places where I don't really want to go. So um, we'll have to see how that goes. Honestly, it's, despite the fact that she's looking now, I think it's more realistic that uh, we're coming out with some new books and business will kind of pick up a little more. Because we kind of had a, last year was sort of a big hiccup uh, with our printer situation with the company that prints our books kind of blowing up just before we went out of the country. <clears throat> so uh, I'm thinking we'll probably spend a couple more years here and try to just figure out a way to make it work for now so that we can save the money for the kind of property that we're looking for here. But we'll see how it works out. <laughs> Like I said, I'm not sure that we entirely agree on that, but <laughs> yes, Stacy, bacon makes everything better. So I'm seeing some stuff on Facebook. Hiya, Deb. Yeah, for me it's not showing. All right, the oven light is on. Oh, sure enough. Uh, is that uh, bad? Yeah, it probably won't hurt anything. Oh, well, I was going to say, I think maybe Tara might have been testing some recipes earlier, so maybe she was raising bread in there. <laughs> Is that love that Jack always steals a piece of something? Yes. Actually, the moment they got in the door, they were, Jack said, Bacon! Because um, that's what he likes to say about bacon. Uh, but I was telling him, you know, you have to wait till we make the show recipes. <laughs> Wow, Barbara says, I think you can use almond milk to make homemade cream of mushroom soup, and that would taste good. I, I'm not really sure how you would make it, but I'm sure it wouldn't be very hard, because I probably would, just off the top of my head, I would think maybe some almond milk, some mushrooms, some maybe garlic and salt and pepper, kind of stir it up and kind of cook it down a little bit. That's probably what I would do if I was going to make the soup part for myself. And actually, I didn't do it. Maybe I should have. But 
for those of you who are following the spinach casserole saga, last year I kept saying how I really wanted to make one. Oh, Denise, I wasn't hungry until this show. Thanks a lot, Mike. You're welcome. Hey, at least it's good. I mean, this is going to be pretty tasty food. So, uh, last year I found a spinach casserole recipe that I thought might be like the one I was thinking of. And it ended up being really good, but it had a bunch of cream cheese and stuff in it. And it was just too heavy. Uh, so I got to thinking in my mind, I wonder if I could just put like a, a, fro a bag of frozen spinach and like one can of cream of mushroom soup and maybe a little bit of seasoning. You know, everybody, if you're, if you're regular here, you probably know that Mike is crazy about garlic, but putting some seasonings in and then maybe putting some of those uh, fried onions on the top. So I think I'm gonna experiment with that and see how it goes. Although, wow, when I saw the price of those fried onions, I thought we need to come up with a recipe for that. <laughs> Cause it was really expensive. Oh, thank you, Cheryl. Mike, you're doing a great job. All right. So we've got about two more minutes before we get the pot pie out. Uh, anybody have any questions or anything? Um, oh, I'm looking back on YouTube again. Thank you, Colton. Y'all are the best. Pray for Tara. Vintage Believer wants to know why Kansas? Well, the only reason she was thinking Kansas is because it was... It was a 3,400 square foot house with uh, like a 3,000 square foot warehouse attached to it on eight acres. <laughs> and it was good. about 100,000 more dollars than our little neighborhood house here. Um, so mainly Colorado is just a lot more expensive for less. And I think it's just because, you know, the climate's really nice close to the mountains and stuff like that. Sadly, a lot of people here never go to the mountains at all. I'm thinking, why spend a high price for real estate and live close to the mountains if you're not gonna go there? So, <laughs> Barbara, yay garlic, yes. Uh, actually, as far as, you know, Kansas was an okay place. We lived there for 10 years after we got married. Tara grew up there as well, um, but, I don't know, after we met and got married here in Colorado and then we moved away for a long time and we'd only intended to be gone for a couple of years and it ended up being 15 years. <clears throat> so now that we're back and we've been back for a while and we finally got our lives sort of stable, because when we moved from Kansas back to here, it was a, we had to sell a really nice house on more land for a tiny house in a neighborhood <laughs> really close to the other houses. Um, so now that we're kind of stable here, I hate to go again, especially since Dave and I have found that we really, really like hiking together in the mountains. Uh, and Tara used to love the mountains, but she's kind of lost her excitement for it because here in Colorado right now, so many people are moving here that the driving is crazy. Like people just run stoplights and stop signs. And for a while she had been in a lot of car accidents because people kept hitting her. Thankfully, that hasn't been the case lately, but I think it made her sort of lose the love for Colorado. Uh, oops, I just realized I need another. Oh snap! I need another hot pad. I took out Tara's turkey and I set it on the two other hot pads I had. <laughs> but I don't want to scorch the table. All right. Let's see how this turned out. Oh, whoa, it's looking pretty nice. Wow, smells awesome. Ooh, I'm gonna have to come over there. Should have taken that out, but let's see, I'm gonna clear this off so we can show it to everybody. Yeah, so that's the reason why she thought Kansas. Original, last couple years ago, she was looking a lot. I think she was kind of feeling desperate to get away from the traffic in. Unfortunately, we have a lot of neighbors with dogs that bark a lot and stuff like that. And I think she was just thinking of change, but she was looking in up. Um, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Before I tell you that story. So this is the pot pie as it just came out. Probably ought to let it cool for, <laughs> probably ought to let it cool for a couple minutes before I dig into it, just to let it kind of meld together. So 
I will. Dave, can you give me a one of those small little decorative plates that Mom has in there? Did you story again about? Yeah, she had at one point been looking all over the country, uh, but at the time. I suggested that she and Ellie go on a road trip because she was looking in Tennessee and other places, and I'm sure they're nice, but I thought we moved away from Kansas because of heat and humidity it was making her sick with her chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia. And I said, I think you're not going to like the heat and humidity. Well, it was August. So she and Ellie made a road trip kind of all the way out to the East Coast. So they went to Kansas and Missouri and... Um, Tennessee, North Carolina, and then they went and visited some family in New York and New Jersey, and then they stopped in Pennsylvania and some other places in Wisconsin on the way back. And I think that she realized the weather was more uh, intense in August than she remembered. <laughs> so actually, we could, if we wanted to have fewer people and maybe a little bit less cost, go to Wyoming or uh, Idaho. We used to live in Idaho and we loved it, but b both of those places are getting pretty um, expensive now because a whole bunch of people from California are moving to uh, Colorado and Idaho, and then a lot of the Colorado people are moving to Wyoming because there's so many people coming to Colorado, <laughs> and that's just causing the prices to go up. All right, Mike's impatient, so uh, let's see, where's that? I'm going to dig into this and see. Okay, so before I actually dig into it, I'll just show you one more time. This is how it looks all done. Yeah. And you can see all the goodies underneath. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So I'm going to go ahead and... Oops, I forgot. I laid it right on the tabletop. Okay. I'm going to zoom into you cutting What'd you say? I'm going to zoom into you cutting it. So I think something else I was thinking about when Tara was talking about us moving is she's very type A. I'm guessing you guys hadn't guessed. And so she loves to always be kind of doing things, but sometimes she gets herself in over her head. And I was thinking it would be helpful if the business wasn't all in the house. Because right now our shipping is in the house. It makes it hard for her to ever stand down, take a break. Wow. <laughs> Holy moly, that just all came out like a top. Oh, oops, there's the bottom part. <laughs> oops, so I guess I should have turned it over. So some of the oops, center part didn't come out. So I'm, I'm going to first show you. Top. I'm going to plop it right on top. Yeah. So I probably should have turned it over on the plate so that the crest part would be like the bottom. Man, this smells really good. Hey, Jack! Let's see if Jack will eat a piece. Yeah. Come try this. Nah. <laughs> Immediately, nah. Here. I'm not sure I want to. It's kind of hot. So, we, we haven't made this for a long time because Tara says the boys, well, Tara says she thinks, she thought nobody liked it, but here, blow on it. And then try it and just see if you like it. We're going to have to find the, the true test here. Is it? Well, you, you only cut the bread part? Or did you get some in the middle? I've got some in the middle. Do you like it? Mm, pretty good. Pretty good? All right, so I am very fond of pot pie, so let me try it and see. Mmm, that's really good. Hmm. So, we didn't have time, the recipe calls for time, so Tara suggested I put Italian seasoning on it, so it's really good, but it tastes a little bit like an Italian pot pie. <laughs> Man, this is, the older kids t tend to like this, the younger kids, depends on how picky they are about little vegetable pieces. Mmm. But it turned out really good. And I was thinking, I, so for those of you who are cheering about the garlic, if I was just making it for me, I would probably would put some garlic in. In fact, now that I have this bacon here for the green beans, 
Probably would have been really good to put some bacon in there. That would have added a nice flavor to it. So let's see, do I like to grill? Well, <clears throat> so here's the deal. This plan with Jen is asking. I do like to grill, but I don't do it very often. Um, <laughs> would I consider making a guy's dad's grill recipe book? Probably not real soon, because I'd have to do a lot more of it. What I'd really like is to make uh, kind of like a Tex-Mex kind of thing. Although I don't have a lot of recipes. I, I just cook a lot of things off the top of my head, but some things I would really like to know how to cook. Um, but I do like grilling. I just don't do it very much because Tara does. <laughs> so usually she cooks it while I'm working still in the other room. Let's see. Heat and humidity here in South Carolina is terrible. Yeah. Amy, don't move. I'm looking forward to coming to Colorado one day. Yeah, I hate to say it because Tara was today she's been kind of in the mo in the mindset of i'm going to be cleaning up things and getting rid of things and painting the doors uh, to some of the rooms that are where they're kind of dirty or whatever and just in case and i was thinking uh, <laughs> i i hope that she's not setting her heart too much on moving right away <laughs> i mean i would love to just snap my fingers and be in a house we liked better but it would be nice if it was nearby we did look at one last week that was a school, like an old schoolhouse made into a house, and it was really cute. But the septic, uh, septic was old, and the septic field, the leach field, took up pretty much a half acre of, that wasn't covered up by buildings already. And so there was nowhere for us to build uh, like some sort of place to store books. Although yesterday Ellie and I were talking and I, and I was thinking maybe we should send the books somewhere else and have a company that actually does that handle the shipping and then Tara would be out of that. Because she feels the need to do it herself. But, and if it's in the house, I think that temptation is always there. Um, but I think if I could get it to where there wasn't as much kind of work stuff for her. Because she doesn't do... Most of the time she doesn't do a whole lot of work. Uh, like she, she comes on the shows and does the shows. And right now we're making a cookbook, so she does that. But we try to let her stand down a lot because of her chronic illnesses. Um, and because she's so type A, it's hard for her to see it and not want to do it. So anyway, Music Mad made goat's milk soap today. Whoa, cool. Just oatmeal and essential oils. That sounds awesome. Oh, by the way, let me share that link. Uh, Ellie has, Ellie's taken over Tara's goat milk soap. Well, some of her stuff, the, mostly the goat milk stuff. And I'll share that link here. And I forgot to share the Dining on a Dime link too. <clears throat> if, you're, if you're in the United States, the shipping right now is flat rate because I was having trouble getting our new website fully online. So we decided to go ahead and leave it that way for until I, probably tomorrow or Friday, I'll be doing experiments with shipping. Uh, but if, up until we get it online, that flat rate will still be that option. Unfortunately, out of the US, we kind of, just before we switched the website, the post office raised their rates. And so it was costing us about $20 more than we were charging for shipping to send them. <laughs> so. Although we may get a bigger discount with the new, the new setup, so we'll see. Let's see. Ellen, rent a storage space. Actually, I told Tara what would be cool is to find a property. It doesn't have to be a huge house. We just would like to have enough land to have some distance between us and the neighbors. Uh, particularly here, people just love dogs as ornaments. And so... A lot of times they live, the dogs are outside a lot and bark a lot. And so we'd like a place that's big enough where if the dogs were barking, they would be further away from the house. <laughs> but uh, I told her we should, if we found a place, because that farmhouse that we looked at the other day, or the house that was a, previously a school that we looked at the other day, <clears throat> was about a mile away from a farmer friend I have who's like 80, 85 or 87. And he's kind of... He still likes to go out and do his farming, but he's kind of partially retired. And he has a lot of building space, uh, warehouse type space for the farm. 
that he's not using as much. And I told Tara, wow, if we had a place like that and there was a farmer like that nearby, maybe we could ask to rent one of those spaces for a while and they would get paid and then we would probably not have to spend as much. Uh, is Colorado an extreme taxation state now? Uh, no, it's not real high at the moment, but the legislature we have, I think would like to raise taxes more. Uh, for us, the particular property we have is in a neighborhood that has double the tax of the rest of our town. <clears throat> and we were unaware of that when we bought the house. So that would be a good reason to move. So Laura, thanks for a good recipe, Mike and Dave and Jack. I'll watch later going out into the field now. Laura, it's really beautiful where you are. So <laughs> I think that's a good choice. Let's see. I'm gonna look and see if anyone has any other questions. Yeah, Facebook doesn't look like, I'm not seeing any questions on Facebook, any new ones. So guys, if you're posting over there. Did you refresh? Cause... I'm refreshing now to see. Um, I won't stay on forever, but I just thought if anyone has any questions or wants to talk about anything, I'll stay on for that. Do, 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 let's see. Oh, there we go. I think I'm seeing more. Yes, we're really friendly in Northwest Kansas. Actually, I think Northwest Kansas is, is you know, pretty nice, but I said to Tara the other day, if you want to go to Kansas, at least you can go to Goodland or somewhere where it's not as far from the mountains, and Tara said, no. <laughs> I think she doesn't like the wind, uh, and Wichita at least was less windy, so... <laughs> okay, I'm looking to see if there are any other questions there. Actually, I know there's a lot of concern about the, the coronavirus, but Ellie was noticing the really low prices to travel for flights and stuff. And we have this app that she and I use to follow prices of flights. I'm amazed at how cheap the travel is at the moment and wishing we could go. But um, we're preparing three more books, so kind of busy at the moment. Um, not really, I realize that that virus is potentially really serious, but we're not really particularly afraid of it. We're not scared at all. Uh, what'd you say? We're not scared at all. Well, okay, so we're not scared <laughs> at all. I mean, I wouldn't want to get sick with it, just like I wouldn't want to get sick with any other thing. And I know being unknown, that's kind of a little scary, but... It wouldn't stop us from traveling if we weren't busy with other stuff at the moment. So, would any of the children move with us? Okay, Susan, so that's part of a thing for me. I, I think the younger ones that still live with us, yes. Like, Ellie's here, but she wants to move. So, and BJ is kind of really, he's really settled into his work here, and he's doing phenomenally well at his job. And for those of you guys who are following the Slumlord situation, um, he's now fully released from that apartment. So that's awesome. But he has a place he really likes in Northern Colorado. And now his job wants to have him, wants to pay him double to be a manager temporarily of a store south of Denver. And that's about an hour and a half away from his house. <laughs> but because it pays more, he's likely to want to do it. But I think it sounds like it's, temporary but if he takes it will eventually there won't be an opportunity to replace him with someone else he's one of the top salespeople in the company um, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say which company it is but it's basically cable and internet and phone stuff so mm -hmm. it probably is he okay I think this company doesn't mind but the previous one didn't want us to say so Anyway, so yeah, as far as the kids, I would prefer not to move away from the kids, but obviously they, like Ellie, she's been talking about moving somewhere else just to try it out for a while. So I realize they might move away from us, but if we move away, we move away from all of them. <laughs> and if one of them moves away, the others might still be close. So, so I'd say, Moving away from BJ and the mountains are my two biggest things I'd rather not. 
but it's not like we wouldn't see him. If we were in a place like Kansas, where the housing cost is dramatically less, I probably would say we just have to budget more money for traveling to see the kids. And that would be okay. It's mainly the hiking, because we're at, we live at 5,000 feet here, and the mountains that Dave and I like to hike are between about 8,500 feet and 13,000. And so if we lived closer to sea level and came out here to visit and hike, it would be a lot more difficult because we wouldn't be able to breathe as well. So anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, and in the past we moved around a lot and I'm just not sure how much more of that I have in me. <laughs> Although I did tell her, I really did like Idaho and um, we lived in a pretty remote part of Idaho, but somewhere like Boise wouldn't be too bad. But uh, McCall, Idaho is kind of like Estes Park, Colorado here, or at least that's what it was like. And uh, it's a little more remote, but big enough to, you know, have some population. Uh, someplace like that might be good, but for now, I'm thinking here. <laughs> All right, so I'm looking to see if we have any other questions or comments. I don't want to bore you guys. Hope Floats, is Tara okay? She is okay, but she's just been... So, most of you know she has a uh, chronic illness, and she kind of goes up and down on that. And for the last probably two or three months, she's not been feeling well from that. <clears throat> but in the last two weeks, uh, she thought she got food poisoning, but it just kept going. And... So we now think she's got some kind of a, some kind of a bug. So she's going to the doctor to be adjusted for her fibromyalgia, uh, but she's also probably going to ask for some antibiotics while she's there. So yeah, yeah. Karen doesn't like the packing and unpacking. I agree. And I don't know. I'm the kind of person that I like doing unusual things. Like when we were overseas this summer, wasn't on the agenda, but the whole family was. We were going from Ireland back to England, and we had been in England a lot, in London. And Tara and the boys wanted to just kind of stand down. But Ellie and I were thinking, man, it'd be fun to do something different. <clears throat> so just on the spur of the moment, we said, let's go to Paris. So we planned, a, we just kind of lightly planned a Paris trip just a few days later. And we went there with no specific plan except the train comes in this day and leaves this day, and we, the rest of it we figure out while we're there. So in that sense, I'm really good at being spontaneous, and I like it. But when it comes to the house, it drives me crazy. Since we've lived at this house, Tara has moved the silverware drawer like four times. <laughs> it drives me crazy. Because somehow, even though I like to be spontaneous about hiking in the mountains, or spontaneous when we're traveling about just suddenly going somewhere else, or doing kind of crazy things like that. I'm not really very spontaneous when it comes to home. <laughs> like things, I like it when things are kind of in a predictable place. And I thought, man, in our house it would be nice anyway because we're not sure how well our dog sees. <laughs> and I was thinking, if I was an old guy who couldn't see very well, it would make me really crazy. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes, Sherry, I'm, I'm staying near, in or near the mountains, I, I agree. So, I'll probably have to talk to Tara. Um, did Tara's computer ever get fixed or is it still touring the country? It finally did come back, yes. Nancy, love Ireland. I absolutely love Ireland too. It's probably my favorite country, or at least to visit for sure. I think it would be fun to stay there for a longer time, and we did this summer, uh, but I absolutely love Ireland. And I really had a good time. Actually, we had a good time everywhere we went. Um, but because I hadn't been to France in a very long time, it was pretty great, especially going with Ellie, who just loves to travel like I do. Um, but Norway, Turid on here, if you guys know Turid, she lives in Norway, and we only went to Norway because Turid said, hey, you guys are going to be in Scotland, and that's pretty close. <laughs> and it was amazing. It was just really, really wonderful. Not entirely what I expected, but it was it was pretty wild and a lot of water and mountains. It was just, just spectacular. Price-wise, it was very expensive. But we just didn't eat that much while we were there. <laughs> but
But, you know, we were also in Scotland and England and um, Crystal, one of our viewers, doesn't usually comment very much in the comments, but she's just fantastic. And she uh, invited us to stay in a, a house that she owns in her town. And it was just great hanging out with her. And it was just beautiful. So anyway, let's see. Dave is showing me the clock because I think he's ready to be done. But I'm going to see if there's anything else here. Oh, I was just saying we're already past time, so whatever. Yeah. Like, Vintage Believer, that's the worst part about moving, leaving the children, or the children leaving you. Yeah. I figure they have to go out and spread their wings and they may leave us, but I'm at the point where I don't necessarily want to leave them. Although, <laughs> it's funny, I'm, I'm a little different than Tara, but with BJ being, yeah, here, sure. But save the rest for me. Yeah. Um, we're talking. We're divvying up the bacon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one that, <clears throat> like, if I don't hear from BJ for, we don't hear from him a lot of times, but maybe once or twice a week, and I'll text him every day, but only hear back from him once or twice a week, <laughs> with a fairly short message. Usually he contacts me if, uh, if it's something about helping Jill, or he'll say like, "Did Nan get her phone yet?" or something like that. But he's very matter of fact business like Tara. <laughs> For me, I'm thinking, hey son, how are you? <laughs> so in that sense, it wouldn't be that much different if we moved, but I still like being where I know I could try to see if I can go up there and have lunch with them at work. So, uh, it, Wu Jin Yu is Penny Pinch and Mama, 500 Ways I Lived on $500 a Month, an ebook, yes. It's actually an ebook and a print book, um, and you can choose if I'm, I'll share the link to our store right here. Uh, you can choose if you want it as an ebook or a print book. It's one of the so we're kind of moving to having only cookbooks as print books, um, but that one we have still a bunch of the print books left. And once we get our new books out, right now we're having to reformat Dining on Dime a little more because the binding issue tar wants we're having trouble getting printers that can do the binding that we need for the size that it is so we're reformatting it to try to have a slightly different binding but we're also coming out with a sequel to that book probably in the early summer and tara has she's making a gluten-free dining on a dime which is kind of the same as the original book with gluten-free recipes so some of them are different a lot of them are the same, but modified by her to be spectacularly good. But we also have um, some other books that we're working on, Freezer and Quick and Easy and stuff. Those will probably all be print books, which is why she's kind of worried about the house and having enough space. But at one point we did hire a company to keep the books in stock and ship them out, but their fees were just eating us alive. But I'm thinking we may have to reapproach that. Mm -hmm. So anyway, all right. So let me just take one last little look here because Dave is ready to go. Patty, I was ENFP on Myers-Briggs. <laughs> and so was Jack. Uh, I'm INFP. Totally doesn't surprise me because Jack and I are both super outgoing and super friendly. and No one else in the house is. Everyone <laughs> else is super introvert. <laughs> We're all extreme introvert shy people. Yes, Sherry, I agree. Home needs to feel stable. And I think that's partly what Tara doesn't like about this house. Um, because of some things like the, the, the neighbor's dogs and things like that, it just doesn't feel like you can relax. Um, so we both have our own reasons. I, don't, I just don't like to move, but I don't mind moving if it's here. Sherry, New Zealand is on my bucket list. Yes, I would love to go to New Zealand as well. And Australia and all kinds of other places. Northern Sweden. Dave says Northern Sweden. Or the North area. I'm Patty, sorry. that's what you are also? That's awesome. Florida Singularity Jonathan, INFJ, yes. Classic well, for sure. INFP, so one off with Jonathan. All right. Well, thanks a lot, everybody. I hate to go because some people are still commenting, but I don't want to drag it on too long either, so... I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the day. 
those of you who are just starting out down under, and those of you who are up here in the U.S. where it's getting dark, please check out our Dining on a Dime cookbook. If you don't have it, it's really awesome. It, the recipes are really, really good and easy to make, and you can save a ton of money with that on your groceries. And <laughs> one of the reasons I like to cook it out of it on the show is to show that you can make some pretty amazing things pretty easy. Most of my experience cooking is not from the cookbook, so when I do cook from a cookbook, this one particularly, it, I just think, man, it's like a restaurant. <laughs> so anyway, well, better than a restaurant, really, and a lot cheaper. So anyway, all right. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and go. So have a wonderful evening. I will tell Tara that all you guys are asking about her, and have a great rest of the week and a great weekend. We'll see you Monday. And I don't know what the show Monday is yet, but we'll find out. I almost should take over the show again. Because <laughs> I want to really try making those little fried onion ring things that you put on top of casseroles. But we'll have to see. So anyway, all right, we'll talk to you later. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Bye.